Welcome to Electron Line. Here's another really good example that shows the difference between having a mass pull another mass from the, uh, across the surface of a table or a constant force. Notice that the weight of the small mass is 8 newtons and the constant force by which we pull this big mass of, uh, that has a weight of 20 newtons across the table. Notice the two are the same. So the question is, will the accelerations be the same, and will the tension in the string be the same? From a first observation, you would think, yeah, they should be the same. But when we start working them out, you'll find out it's not the same. They're actually different, and you'll see in just a moment why. So let's start with the right side here. Let's go ahead and say that F net is equal to mass total times acceleration. Now in this case the total mass is just the one mass that we have because we don't have another mass over here. But before we can continue with that, we probably will have to identify all the forces acting on the whole system. So we do have the force due to gravity acting downward, so that would be mg or m1g because this is m1. And then we have the normal force pushing back, which is equal to m1g and since there's no coefficient of friction between the mass and the table, there's no friction force there, so it looks like there's only one net force acting on the whole system, which is the 8 Newton force pulling down. And the total mass will simply be m1, so that means that the net force, which is the force 8 in the acceleration, assuming the acceleration will be in this direction, we can then say that 8 Newtons is equal to m total, which is simply m1, times acceleration, which means that A, the acceleration will be 8 newtons, divided by m1. Now notice in this case the masses were not given, but the weights of the objects were given. So we have to make a conversion. We know that the weight is equal to the mass times acceleration to gravity, or the mass is therefore equal to the weight, whoop, the weight divided by the acceleration due to gravity, which means that this becomes 8 newtons divided by m1, and m1 can then be written as the weight, 20 newtons divided by the acceleration, acceleration due to g, which means it's 8 newtons divided by 20 newtons times g, which means in this case the acceleration is equal to, and I'm looking for my calculator, so we have uh, 8 divided by 20, which is 0 0.4, well that's quite obvious, 0 0.4 times g, and then if we calculate that, that's times 9.8, that would be 3.92 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration in the situation to the right. What about the tension in the string? Well, the tension in the string must equal to the force by which you pull on the string. So therefore, tension equals force, which is equal to 8 newtons. So that's the situation on the right. We have an acceleration of 3.92 meters per second squared and a tension in the string equal to the force applied of 8 newtons. So how does that compare to this situation? Well, again, we know that we have F equals MA, but let's go ahead and identify all the forces here. So here we clearly have M2G, which is equal to 8 newtons. And here we have the M1G, which is equal to 20 newtons, and the normal force pushing back. The normal force is equal to m1g, which is equal to 20 newtons. And we don't have a friction force because the coefficient of friction is equal to zero. So again, we have the force here applied to the system causing the acceleration. And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, isn't that the same thing? But again, it's not, and you'll see in just a moment why. So again, we'll write down that F net equals mass total times acceleration, and notice the difference here is that the total mass here is only m1, but here the total mass will be the sum of the two masses, and there you can see the difference between the two situations. So the net force will indeed be m2g, which is equal to the total mass, which is m1 plus m2, times acceleration, which means acceleration is equal to m2g, divided by m1 plus m2, and m2g is indeed 8 newtons, but we now have to divide that by the sum of the two masses, m1 plus m2. So notice, 
Here we had 8 newtons divided by m1, but here we have 8 newtons divided by m1 plus m2. And so when we calculate that, A is equal to 8 newtons divided by, again, we make the conversion from mass, from weight to mass, so that would be the weight m1, which is 20 newtons, divided by g plus m2, which is 8 newtons, divided by g, which is equal to 8 newtons divided by 28 newtons times g, which is equal to, and here again, we're going to need a calculator. So 8 divided by 28, that's going to be not quite as even as a number. So that'll be 0.2857 g, and times 9.8 is equal to 2.8 meters per second square. So notice that instead of having an acceleration of 3.92 meters per second square, it's only 2.8 meters per second square. So you do get a very different acceleration. What about the tension? Well, let's say we take this object right here and we draw a free body diagram that indicates then when we only consider this mass right here, we'll have a force upward, which is equal to the tension in the string. And then looking at that situation only, realizing that the acceleration of the system will indeed be, and uh, I'm having trouble getting the cap off here, so we know that the acceleration will be in this direction, we could then say that F net is equal to mass total times acceleration, but only considering this free body diagram of this one mass right here, we know that the F net, which is the force pulling in the same direction of acceleration, which is m2g minus the force opposing acceleration, which is the tension, is equal to the total mass, which is only m2 times acceleration. And putting the tension over here and this over here, we can see that m2g minus m2a is equal to the tension, or the tension is equal to m2g minus m2a. Now m2g, we realize that's equal to 8 newtons, so the tension is equal to 8 newtons minus m2a, m2a. So realizing here that the tension was equal to the force was equal to 8 newtons, in this case it's not equal to 8 newtons, it's 8 newtons minus the, acceleration, the force required to accelerate it. And let's see here, that would be T is equal to 8 newtons minus m2. Now m2 again, we're going to write as the weight divided by g, so it would be 8 newtons divided by g times a, and a we found to be 2.8 meters per second square. And so g being 9.8, we can now say that this is equal to 2.8 times 8 divided by 9.8 equals, that would be 2 point, eh, let's say 2.3, so we have the tension is equal to 8 newtons minus 2.3 newtons, so the tension is equal to 5.7 newtons. Notice we get a very different result for both the acceleration and the tension in the string when it's an object with a weight causing an acceleration versus a constant force. The big difference between the two, that here you only have one mass that you're accelerating, here the weight itself, the object itself, also needs to be accelerated, so the force acts not just on this alone, but on this and this object together. And that's why we get the different results in those two different situations. And that's how it's done.